Have you ever wondered why the figure of the Antichrist exerts such a powerful hold over our imaginations? This ominous specter, with its menacing aura, has been a constant in apocalyptic literature for centuries. It's a symbol shrouded in mystery and intrigue, captivating our minds and stirring our deepest fears. From the foreboding prophecies of ancient scrolls to the dystopian narratives of modern fiction, the Antichrist has been a potent symbol of evil and chaos. It has transcended time and culture, making its mark in every corner of human literature. This symbol's prevalence raises an interesting question. Why is it so resonant? Is it our fascination with the unknown, our innate fear of chaos, or perhaps our struggle with the concept of evil? The Antichrist in all its iterations serves as a mirror to our collective psyche, reflecting our deepest anxieties and darkest fears. As we delve into this enigmatic figure, we'll uncover the profound transformations it has undergone throughout literary history. The Antichrist, the antagonist of the end times, first emerged in ancient prophetic texts. This ominous figure, embodying all that is contrary to the divine, took root in the fertile soil of religious narratives. Its birth can be traced back to the sacred texts of major religious faiths, where it was initially depicted as a religious adversary. Here, in the heart of apocalyptic literature, the Antichrist was painted with broad, menacing strokes. He was cast as a powerful, charismatic leader, a wolf in sheep's clothing who would lead the faithful astray in the end times. This was not a figure of minor transgressions or petty sins, but a profound embodiment of spiritual corruption, a beacon of falsehood in a world yearning for truth. In the apocalyptic context of these early representations, the Antichrist was not just an individual, but a symbol. A symbol of the ultimate challenge to faith, the final obstacle standing between humanity and divine salvation. He was the storm before the calm, the night before the dawn, the trial to be overcome before the reward could be claimed. The Antichrist was seen as a mirror image of the Messiah, a shadowy reflection of the divine, where the Messiah brought hope the Antichrist brought despair, where the Messiah offered redemption, the Antichrist offered damnation. This stark contrast served to heighten the stakes of the cosmic drama, turning the end times into a battle not just for the survival of the faithful, but for the soul of humanity itself. But as we journey through history, we'll see that this religious figure is not static. Like a chameleon, the Antichrist adapts, taking on new forms and meanings as it moves through time and space. As societies change, as cultures evolve, so too does the Antichrist reflecting the fears and anxieties of each new era. Over time this religious figure evolved, adapting to the shifting cultural and societal landscapes. And as we'll see in the next scene, the Middle Ages and the Renaissance brought their own unique twists to the tale of the Antichrist. As we moved into the Middle Ages and Renaissance, the Antichrist took on new forms and meanings. In the medieval period, the Antichrist became a focal point of religious discourse, a reflection of the times. This was an era of upheaval and transformation, with the Church's authority being questioned and the seeds of the Reformation being sown. The Antichrist was no longer just a biblical figure, but a symbol of all that was corrupt and oppressive. The figure of the Antichrist was used as a potent tool for political and social dissent. It was a way for the common people and the clergy alike to critique the church and the monarchy. It was the embodiment of their fears and frustrations, a tangible manifestation of the corruption they saw in the institutions that should have been their protectors. During the Renaissance, the Antichrist evolved further, the period's emphasis on humanism and individualism led to a reinterpretation of the figure. The Antichrist was no longer just a symbol of institutional corruption, but also a representation of personal moral failings. It was a mirror held up to society, reflecting its greed, ambition, and hubris. This was also the time when the Antichrist began to feature more prominently in literature and art. Dante's Inferno, for instance, depicted the Antichrist as a monstrous, terrifying figure, a symbol of divine retribution. In contrast, in Marlowe's Dr. Faustus, the Antichrist is portrayed as a tragic figure, a symbol of human folly and overreach. 
Through these cultural expressions, the Antichrist became a part of the collective consciousness, a symbol that could be interpreted and reinterpreted according to the needs of the time. It was a reflection of the society's anxieties and aspirations, a figure that could be used to challenge, critique, and provoke. This shift marked a significant turning point in the evolution of Antichrist symbolism. In our modern world, the Antichrist has evolved yet again, reflecting contemporary fears and anxieties. This entity, once a religious symbol, has begun to seep into the cracks of our collective consciousness, finding new life in our books, our films, our art. The Antichrist has become more than just a harbinger of the apocalypse. It has become a mirror held up to society, reflecting our own decay and loss of human values. Take a look at the dystopian novels that have flooded the literary world. The Antichrist is not always a horned beast or a charismatic leader. Sometimes it's a system, an ideology, a way of life that strips away at our humanity. It's a reflection of our fears of losing ourselves to the machine, to the corporations, to the cold, unfeeling future we sometimes feel is inevitable. In the eerie silence of horror films, the Antichrist often takes on a more tangible form. It's the monster under the bed, the shadow in the corner of your eye, the whisper that chills your spine, it's the embodiment of our fear of the unknown, the unexplainable, the other. In popular culture, the Antichrist has become a symbol of the loss of our human values. It's the face of corruption, of greed, of moral decay. It's the warning that if we lose sight of what makes us human, we might just become the monsters we fear. But it's not just a symbol of doom and gloom. In some interpretations, the Antichrist is a catalyst for change, a warning that things need to improve that we need to do better. It's a call to action, a plea for humanity to rise above its baser instincts and strive for something better. Thus the Antichrist remains a powerful symbol, constantly evolving to mirror the anxieties of the age. As we've seen, the Antichrist is a chameleon, changing with the times yet always reflecting something essential about our human condition. From its inception in early religious texts, it captured our deepest fears and anxieties. In the Middle Ages and the Renaissance, it morphed to fit cultural and societal shifts, further embedding itself into the fabric of our collective psyche. And in the modern era, whether in literature or on the big screen, the Antichrist continues to captivate us, reflecting our changing worldviews and the persistent struggle between good and evil. Its enduring power as a symbol lies in its ability to resonate with our shared experiences and emotions, fear, hope, uncertainty. It forces us to confront our own darkness, but also to seek the light. So next time you encounter the Antichrist in a book or movie, remember, it's more than just a symbol of evil. It's a reflection of our collective fears and hopes for the future.